the curtains and see what's really twerking. Televised lies and frequencies of confusion. We can't win for losing. I grip on reality, infatuated with temporal things we see that pass away with the user. Peace be unto you. My name is Tamar Yisrael, and you're watching Beyond the Surface. Have you ever wondered why wars and violence ravish the earth? Why do floods, earthquakes, drought, and wildfires kill thousands of people each year, causing damage to property in the millions? Why do homelessness, poverty, and disease exist amidst a society of opulence and great wealth? To find out the answers to these troubling questions, you must begin to look beyond the surface. What you see is not the truth. This world is a great illusion crafted by the master deceiver, Lucifer, the prince of darkness. In order to understand this great mystery, you must begin to open the third eye, the eye of divine consciousness. And this eye can only be opened by Yahweh, our heavenly father. Only then will you truly understand why there is so much trouble in the world. Beyond the Surface is a documentary formatted program designed to explore topics of interest regarding the end time scenario, the new age movement, technology and business and finance, science, ancient history, and who we are as a nation of people through narration, music, and graphics. We'll end the program with a segment called The Watchman that will warn you of evil and give you understanding of righteousness and truth. We hope you enjoy Beyond the Surface, so sit back and enjoy the program. Beyond the Surface presents The Changing of Yahweh's Calendar System, narrated by Tamar Yisrael. If anyone were to tell you that the beginning of the year used to be in April, would you believe it? Or how about the fact that a new day used to begin every time the sun set in the evening? Wouldn't you be just a bit curious as to how these things got all mixed up and changed around? Since it was Yahweh Elohim, who made the earth, he decided how it would run and set laws in place to govern the natural order based upon a lunar calendar system. So isn't it time you knew the truth regarding how the calendar was established in the earth and about who changed it from the way that Yahweh set it up? Well, the answer to these questions are simple. It was man. 
Most recently, it was the Europeans or Gentiles of the Roman Empire. Why did they change the calendar system from a lunar year to a solar year, you might ask? It was to suit their own interests and to worship their mythological gods, which ultimately is the worship of Lucifer. In 46 BC, Julius Caesar issued a decree changing the Roman calendar from a lunar to a solar year. Why? To worship the sun god. Caesar ordered the Romans to disregard the moon in calculating their calendars. Thus, the Julian calendar was established. It provided that the common year should consist of 365 days in every fourth year of 366 days, and each year was to begin on January 1. Most early civilizations, with the exception of the Hebrew Israelites, Yahweh's holy people, including the Egyptians, the Mayans, and the Teutons, followed a solar calendar because they too worshiped the sun as their god. The Romans blended the Egyptian and Teutonic calendar systems to form the Julian calendar. The calendar system presently in use was introduced in 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII, who made only minor changes to the Julian calendar. The Catholic world felt improvements were warranted because the religious holiday Easter, the Christian's holiday to celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead, was moving further and further away from the vernal equinox, which is the beginning of spring, and the Jewish Passover, which is April 14th, the actual date of the Messiah's death. In fact, at that time, Easter was being celebrated before the vernal equinox date of March 21st. In order to reset the Julian calendar, so that Easter would come after the vernal equinox and closer to the Jewish Passover, 10 days were dropped, and it was ordered throughout the Roman Empire that the day following October 4th, 1582 of the Julian calendar should be designated as October 15th, 1582 of the Gregorian calendar. Both calendars reckon time based on a solar year, January 1st. To this very day, people all over the earth still believe that January 1st is the beginning of the year. But that is a huge lie. And we know that Satan is the father and maker of a lie. The scriptures state, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John chapter 8, verse 44. Yahweh began the year in the springtime, in the month we know as April, pronounced Abib in Hebrew, and that is located in the book of Exodus chapter 12 and 2, and the book of Exodus chapter 13, verse 4. Working through the Caesars of Rome, however, Lucifer managed to change the natural law governing the beginning of the year from the springtime in April to the dead cold winter month of January. But why January? Because the Romans named their first month of the year after Janus, the Roman god of entrances, exits, and beginnings. Janus was represented as having a double head that looked into the past and into the future. Hence, it was appropriate to name for him the month that looked backward through the winter to the old year and at the same time forward to the new year. The Romans began their celebration to honor Janus on December 31st, or what is called New Year's Eve, at midnight. Today, the modern world continues in the worship of this pagan deity. Their rituals to him consist of feasting and revelry and the shooting of guns and fireworks and the making of New Year's resolutions. Every year on January 1st, unsuspecting millions of people take part in great sacrificial meals prepared for Janice. 
These poor souls have no earthly clue that they are honoring a pagan Roman god and that according to the scriptural Hebrew calendar, it is not even the beginning of the year. That ends part one of the changing of Yahweh's calendar system. Stay tuned for part two. and the truth shall set you free, if you choose to follow it. What is April Fool's Day, and how did it begin? The origin of this holiday began with the reformation of the calendar when the date for the new year was moved from April 1st to January 1st. During that time in history, there were no televisions or radios, so word spread slowly. There were also those who chose to simply ignore the change and those who merely forgot. These people were considered fools and practical jokes were played on them. I too am an April fool because I still believe and celebrate the new year on April 1st. Thus, the first day of April became known as All Fools Day and the custom of fooling people on that day became popular and spread throughout the European continent. Today, people have no idea as to the origin of this holiday, yet it helps to validate the fact that April was indeed once considered the beginning of the year, just as Yahweh declared. Who are you going to believe, Yahweh or man? And just because a man changed it, it doesn't make it right. The prophets in the Holy Scriptures warned us that a Roman king and his false prophet would be the ones to change times and laws and that it would be given into his hands until the end of this present world system. There were four world empires to rule the earth and the Roman Empire was the fourth and the most ferocious and deadly. Because most people don't know how the calendar was set up in the beginning by Yahweh, since they don't read the Bible, and if they read it, they have no understanding of what they read because they are taught by false teachers and preachers. They have no clue as to what things have changed. The Romans took great pain in not only changing the beginning of the year, but also in naming most of the months after a different mythological god, goddess, or a Caesar himself. There were certain holidays within the Roman year set aside to worship these pagan deities. To top matters off, they either added days or took days away from the certain months, like February, which only has 28 days. It's because you have been deceived that you follow the Roman calendar and their ways of doing things. You've heard the old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Well, I'm here to tell you that that will get you killed. Doing what the Romans do will end you in the lake of fire upon Judgment Day. You must begin to understand the origins of this madness and turn away from the system that the Romans have set up contrary to Yahweh's word. He demands complete obedience and worship of him and him alone throughout the 12 months of the calendar year, beginning in April, not January. The entire Bible was written according to and based on a Hebrew calendar year. Therefore, to understand the Bible, you must understand and use the Hebrew lunar calendar. If it is in your heart to serve the true and living Yah, then the keeping of his holy Sabbaths and festivals in their season throughout the year are essential elements of the believer's walk, worship, and service. And now, let's examine Yahweh's calendar system and gain some understanding. A calendar is a system of measuring and recording the passage of time. 
It orders time into years, seasons, months, weeks, and days. The ancient Hebrew calendar began with the creation of the earth, where Yahweh provided the sun, the moon, and the stars for measuring times and seasons. Since the first man, Adam, time has been measured in terms of years. According to the scriptures, Adam was 130 years of age when he became father to Seth. By the time of the flood, Noah still divided the year into 12 months. The year was made up of four climatic seasons, the spring equinox, the summer solstice, the fall equinox, and the winter solstice. In the Bible, the individual months are usually designated by numbers according to their position in the year. For example, the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 26 states, the angel Gabriel was sent to Mary in the sixth month. That is the sixth month of the Hebrew calendar, which corresponds to the month of September as we know it today, since April is the beginning of the Hebrew year. The Hebrew months run from new moon to new moon. The Hebrew word for month is Kadesh, which means new. The other Hebrew word for month is Yerek, which means lunation. In other words, new month simply means new moon. Monthly divisions are also used very early in the book of Genesis. By the time of the flood, we find time divided into months of 30 days, since a period of five months was shown to equal 150 days in Genesis chapter 8, verse 3 through 4. There is a new month or new moon every 30 days. Yahweh's, Yahweh instructed the Hebrew Israelites to celebrate the beginning of their months at every new moon in Numbers chapter 10 and 10. And in Isaiah 66 and 33, it states that the new moon will continue as long as there is a heaven and earth. Most calendars will show the phases of the moon, and the new moon normally falls somewhere in the middle to end of the month. For example, the first month of the year, April, starts on the new moon, which comes in the middle of March, and so on. The chart below depicts the Hebrew calendar and its approximate correspondence to the calendar presently in use today. All calendars agree that there are only seven days in a week. This was initially defined by the Holy Scriptures in the first chapter of Genesis. Here, Yahweh created the contents of the heavens and the earth in just six days. On the seventh day, Yahweh rested from all his works and blessed and sanctified the seventh day, calling it the Sabbath day. Later in the book of Exodus, in chapter 20, Yahweh commanded the Hebrew Israelites to observe the seventh day Sabbath of the week forever in all their dwellings throughout all their generations. This was the fourth of the Ten Commandments given at Mount Sinai. The seventh day was a time of holy convocations or gathering together where believers of the true and living Yah read out of the book of the law and the prophets even to this very day. The Sabbath day was observed by Yahshua and his apostles long after his death and resurrection. As you will see in this article and in others, the Sabbath is the first thing that the Romans changed. Today, the seventh day of the week, now called Saturday, is a day of work, and the first day of the week, Sunday, has become a day of rest and worship. Truly, Satan is a master deceiver. His cunning ways have the whole world turned upside down. You must remember that Yahweh blessed the seventh day and made it holy, not the first day of the week. The day, according to the Bible, is a 24-hour period. A new day begins at the setting of the sun, evening, and ends on the following day, sunset. The scripture states, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work which he had made, and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, 
because that in it he had rested from all his work which Elohim created and made. This knowledge is also taken from the book of Genesis as we read about the creative acts of the first six days of the week. And the evening and the morning were the first day, and the evening and the morning were the second day, and so on. The sun sets, rises, and sets again. This cycle of setting and rising and setting again is a full 24-hour day. It equals 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. It was the Romans who changed the beginning of each new day to 12 o'clock midnight. At midnight, however, most people are fast asleep, missing the beginning of each new day. Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, knows best, don't you think? After all, He is the one who created everything. It makes sense that He would divide the 24-hour day into three periods. You are awake when the day starts at sundown, sleep during the night, and you're awake again, rising early in the morning to finish out your day until the sun sets again, beginning a new day. As with the months, the days in the Bible were also referred to by the number of the position it held in the week. For example, the first day, second day, third day, and so on. Again, it was the Romans who added the names of their pagan gods to the days of the week. So now, the first day of the week is named the Day of the Sun, or Sunday, after the sun god. The second day of the week is named Monday, after the moon god, and so on. Please research this information for yourself in a set of encyclopedias. You'll be surprised to learn that each day of the week, you're calling upon the name of one of the European pagan gods or goddesses, including the sun, moon, or the stars of heaven. Forsake the ways of Lucifer and the revived Roman Empire who rules this earth today and begin to govern your life according to Yahweh's lunar calendar system. From season to season, keep his holy feast days and his new moons and worship him on his holy Sabbath day. Follow your heavenly Father and not the Romans, least you will soon perish with the wicked at the destruction of this evil empire. This has been Tamar Israel with the changing of Yahweh's holy calendar system. Thank you and good night. Peace. Welcome to the Watchman segment of our program. You know, uh, since the dawn of time, man has been changing things that the Creator decreed that would be done forever. And as a result, when we look upon the earth, sin that they've labeled crime is running rampant everywhere. Um, many people don't know it, but most of the things that a man does today, especially the holidays that man keeps, is steeped up in paganisms. But the problem is that people don't do the necessary research to find out about these things, and then there are those that do find out about them, and because they're traditions that had been kept by man, then man have a tendency to deal with these things simply because we love the tradition. But just because we do things, it does not uh, necessarily mean that these things are the things that was decreed by the Creator to be, do uh, to be done. And to give you a good example of... Uh, of that, I'd like to uh, read something to you out of the book of Exodus, and uh, uh, then we can understand, uh, uh, maybe it'll help you understand why man keeps January 1st as the beginning of the year instead of what was decreed by the true and living God. This is in Exodus chapter 13. This is right after uh, Yahweh brought our people out of Egypt under Moses. And this is uh, 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 Exodus 13, and I'm going to read verse 4. It says, This month came you out in the month of Abib. In the month of Abib. Now, Abib corresponds to March, April, and it makes sense because this is when things begin to grow up out of the ground, so we can very well see that Yahweh would start his year when things began to rejuvenate on the earth instead of our uh, January 1st, when the earth is steeped in, uh, in cold. Now, I'm going to read something else to you out of uh, Exodus chapter 13. 
it says. This is verse 4. It says, This day came you out in the month of Abib. This day came you out in the month of Abib. Now, he told us that Abib should be the beginning of our year, which falls uh, on the new moon uh, uh, in March, April, according to the Hebrew calendar. And this is the type calendar that Yahweh set up, was the Hebrew calendar. But what man decided he was going to do, he was going to change the beginning of the year to uh, uh, January 1st. Not only so, but man in his calendar, according to the original calendar, it was 360 days in a year. Now we have 365 days in a year because of the calendar that the Christians put on the market and everyone is using it today. And January 1st, the reason why they changed it to January 1st is simply because uh, uh, Janus is the two-faced God that looks into the past and into the future. And all the New Year's resolutions and all those things that, uh, that we do, then we do those things in celebration of Janus, not even, and many of us not even knowing these things. This is why it's so imperative that we read and study to show ourselves approved so that we understand the paganism that's going around uh, in the earth, and then that may help us understand why federal governments and all the churches are about money. That's all they're about, money and power, and you know it, and I know it. As far as salvation is concerned, man isn't talking about what, what it takes for you to get salvation. Man is talking about what it's going to take for you uh, 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 to get God's blessing, and that's putting your tithes in church. But I remember, and I know the older people remember, when they didn't even, uh, the church didn't tithe simply because uh, the Christian church say that we are not under the law, we are under grace. Yet they go back in the book of Exodus and pull 10% tithes out of the book of Exodus, and that's only been done in the latter part of this, uh, uh, what they call the 21st century. But uh, we were told that these things was going to take place, but man, uh, by, by us not knowing the truth, man just, just does not know what Yahweh is doing here upon this earth. But let me uh, read something to you here out of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 16. And this is verse 19. It says, O Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Euro Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself and there are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahweh. And truly today, man, many of people on the earth don't know that the Creator's name is Yahweh. They call him God by title. Well, and let's understand, there are gods many. And these are the things that the Mashiach told us to watch for. He told us that man would, uh, the things that would be brought up on the earth, and he also told us about this captivity that we would be in here, in this country here, for 400 years. And when you look back and see when the uh, first slaves was brought over here, and see the things that are happening to our people, then you can very well see why man has changed things, because truly, man worshiped the adversary, the devil, and we as a people, as Hebrews, we don't understand these things simply because uh, we have to understand that they train our ministers in their seminaries. And we know that our ministers, the thing that they're talking about, this heaven thing and so forth and so on, even Christ himself said, no man goes to heaven except him who come down from heaven. But when you look at the things that man changed in his holidays, they're basically... His, his, his important holidays are set up involving sun signs. This is why they put Christ's birthday on December 25th, and, 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 uh, uh, and we don't know that, uh, that he has done that. But, but see, that confuses some scripture that was written uh, uh, in the book of Luke uh, surrounding the birth of the Messiah. Uh, they put his birth in December 25th, but let me, let me go in here, and I'm going to read out, out of St. Luke uh, chapter 1 
And I'm going to pick this up at verse 26. And it's very important that we understand these things because if we do, we can understand why man is changed things because man worshiped the adversary of the devil. If you don't think so, look out in the streets. Look out in the streets. Crime is running rampant. And look at what's happened to our people, especially our youth. They're on lockdown all over the city. They're big and building bigger jails. And according, according to the King Alfred plan, they plan on interning our nation of people, the Hebrew Israelites, into those camps, just as they did the Japanese uh, back during World War II. However, this won't be for uh, just to detain us for a minute. This will be for our destruction. And when you get into uh, the book of Revelation and read Revelations 12, it tells you, and when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman of the nation that brought forth the man-child that was going to rule all, all nations. And who he was talking about was the children of Israel that brought forth the man-child. But when we ask people today, they say it doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does. If you read your Bible, instead of reading half of your Bible, you'll find out that it does make a difference. You can't separate uh, part of the book from the other part and call one the Old Testament and the uh, one the New Testament simply because the New Covenant, what they call the New Testament, is written in its entirety in the Old Testament and, and uh, in the Holy Prophets. And we don't get these things today. This is why the religions they practice today is built upon uh, uh, epistles and verses and phrases, and uh, even they couldn't get the thing straight. At first, after Rome fell uh, in 476 A.D., they went into the Dark Ages, and when they came out, they had one church, the Roman Catholic Church. And then in the 1500s, a German named Martin Luther separated the protesters from the Catholics. We're still talking about white people. Euro Gentiles. But let me read something to you and, and let's see if, if it was possible, <clears throat> according to the Bible, if Christ was born in the month of December. This is uh, uh, St. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from Elohim into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a, a, a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Miriam. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, you that are highly favored. The Adonai is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this would be. Now, it said that this was in the sixth month. If you use the Hebrew calendar, using April as the beginning of the year, as the Bible states, then uh, six months later would have been September that the angel Gabriel went to Mary. There would have been no way that child could have been born in December. Women still carry babies uh, uh, nine months. Then, if you use that calendar, if he went to uh, uh, Mary in the sixth month, that would have been June, which meant that the Messiah would have had to have been a six-month baby, and it doesn't mention that in the Scripture. I'm quite sure he was uh, full term. Now, the thing we have to ask is this. Well, where did we get December 25th, and why December 25th instead of December 21st? If you're going to change it to something, well, if you look up December 25th, it's called the winter solstice. It's a sun sign, and it's the day that uh, uh, the Euro Gentiles and many other nations uh, used to go and worship the sun. Easter, uh, Astaroth, if you do some research on that, that comes during the spring equinox. This is the time that uh, 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 people say, well, he is risen and all this other stuff with Peter Rabbit and the eggs and all the other lies to go to it. But he had risen. He had risen. But for what purpose had, had he come and was risen and was raised from the dead? Let me go ahead and finish this. I'm still in St. Luke uh, <clears throat> chapter 1. And I'm going to pick, th pick this up at verse 31. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahshua. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Adonai Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Well, the Hebrew Israelites are the people, the ones that's under the blood of the Mashiach, 
We're the one that keep Yahweh's holy Sabbath. The holy Sabbath was uh, what the first thing that Yahweh blessed and sanctified was his holy Sabbath day. But then man changed it from, sat for what, from what they call Saturday to Sunday, the first day of the week. And truly, uh, uh, it was told us that Christ was resurrected on the first day of the week, which day they call Easter Sunday. This is why the, uh, the European changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday, uh, because they say, well, this was the day that Christ resurrected, so we're going to call it Resurrection Sunday, and we are not going to go uh, 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 to church the same day that those Israelites go to church. Now, we went out and taught them. The, all the apostles were Hebrews. And when you read the book of Acts carefully, you find out that even uh, uh, 60 years after the Messiah was resurrected from the dead, the apostles were still keeping Yahweh's holy days. But we don't keep these things today. Man has changed everything to suit himself. This is why he changed the beginning of the year from April uh, to January. Then they gave us holidays instead of keeping holy days. But then once the kingdom is set up, man is going to still keep holy days. But see, man say, well, we don't have to do these things. Well, let's see. These are the things that's going to happen once the Messiah returns back to this earth. This is in Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah, chapter 14. I'm going to start this at verse uh, 16. It says, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came up ag uh, uh, against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is the seventh feast that Yahweh gave us to keep during the year. And here we are, once the Messiah returns, people talk about still keeping the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. And what these things show us is this. Man has changed things. This is why a man tell you, don't read the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation in the beginning. So you have to go back and read the beginning and find out exactly what the Creator said out of his mouth, uh, told his holy prophets. Then we can very well see that man has changed and interpreted things to fit his Christian doctrines. Uh, let, me fit, let me finish this up. But understand one thing. In St. John 4.22, Christ said, salvation is of the Jews. And when you get back in uh, uh, the book of uh, uh, Zechariah, when you get back into Zechariah, a little further back into Zechariah, and read the uh, eighth chapter of Zechariah, it tells you the thing that's going to happen during the first resurrection, and you'll find out by reading the prophet Zechariah that Zechariah said all the nations going to grab onto the coattail of the Jews. Now in the Old Testament, the Jews were black. Now we have white Jews. I find that kind of odd. Uh, uh, it's all of these mysteries. These are the reasons why man does not want you to learn or be taught the mysteries uh, 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 that's written in the Bible. And all of the mysteries are explained in the Old Testament. That way you won't have to speculate about what uh, the Creator had to say. You have all of the information. But we, as a people, we are in denial. We are in complete denial. Uh, we refuse to tell our, our children our heritage in this country here alone. So you know if we don't tell them our heritage in this country here that we will not tell them uh, the heritage uh, uh, of our people before they came to this country. Even today, when you talk, when you, they have Black History Month, nobody talks about slavery. You tell people, say, well, are uh, you a slave? Say, well, no, I'm not a slave. I can go anywhere I want to, but where is your land? The United States government ha dictates everything uh, uh, that you do. So we can't say that we are free. We are captive. Who speaks for us as a nation of people? Nobody. But the Japanese have a spokesman. So does the, 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 uh, the Hispanics. All the other nations come, come over here. They have embassies. Everybody but us. Nobody speaks for us but uh, well, who we really like for, to speak for us is our jack leg pimping preachers. That's who we like to uh, uh, speak for us. But they really don't speak for our whole community. Who they speak for is their one single church. We've been taught that everything involves around our church. Well, no, it doesn't. Yahweh is dealing on a worldwide uh, 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 scheme. 
and he's bringing his word about as he brings uh, us out of captivity. And all the things that's happened in this so-called, let's see what we would call, Negroes, coloreds, African Americans, then we decided we didn't want to be called that, we'd be called blacks for a while, and then we, be we, then we became African Americans again, uh, African Americans instead of Afro-Americans, and now we're known as African Americans and blacks. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you look up that N-word in the dictionary and uh, see what these Gentiles uh, got you classified as. But let me finish this uh, up in, uh, in Zechariah chapter 14. It says, And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. And this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. It was said in Leviticus 23rd chapter, it was told us to keep the feast of tabernacles. And here it is, once the Mashiach set up his kingdom, uh, 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 we are going to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. But these are some things that we don't get simply because man has changed everything, especially uh, 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 man's calendar system. Man changes calendar system, and then before that, man changes the religion. We get in the book of uh, Acts, and we find out that it was white folks that called uh, the, the, the apostles Christians first at Antioch. Well, they call us a whole lot of other names today, but if you go further and pick, uh, pick it up in Acts 18, 20 years later, Paul said he was a Jew of Tarsus. Now, was he a Jew or was he a Christian? And don't think that the Jews is a, is a nation of people. They're not. The Jews is uh, 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 one tribe, the tribe of Judah. And when the Romans came in, they didn't care what pedigree we, uh, we were. They called everybody there Jews. All of our people were known as Jews. But in the beginning, it was not so. Uh, it was just one tribe of Jews. So what this shows is that many, many things has been changed. Many things has been changed. Even when we look in the churches today, uh, uh, we see a lot of things going on that's not necessary. the truth. Now, uh... Uh, uh, people like to say, well, Yahweh uh, uh, chose us and got rid of the Jews, the Israelites. Well, let's see. How could it be when you read Hebrews 8 chapter, the new covenant was made with the house of Israel, the one that was sealed in the Mashiach's blood. But let me read something to you uh, out of the prophet, uh, out, of, out of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 11, it says, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be blind, wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Well, what is the fullness of the Gentiles? Read Revelations 13 chapter, and you'll find out. It's these people that's getting themselves together, following the Pope that's going to fight the Mashiach when he, uh, when he returns. And remember one thing, if you're a protester, or uh, if you prefer to call yourself a protestant, uh, remember, you got Sunday from the Roman, Sunday worship from the Roman Catholic Church, you got Christmas from the Roman Catholic Church, you got Easter from the Roman Catholic Church. All your holy days, you got out of the Roman Catholic Church, and none of those days are mentioned in the Scripture for us to keep. This is why. Sin is running rampant on the earth, and this is why, since the beginning of time, man has changed everything. But let me finish this up in Romans 11. Paul says, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn ungodly to awake from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sin. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. He's talking to the Gentiles now. But it's touching the election, they are beloved of the Father's sake. For the gift and calling of Elohim are without repentance. And when you get in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 7, just before the Creator uh, gets ready to pour His wrath upon the earth before the Messiah comes, 
It was 144,000 that were sealed, and they were the servants of God. And where did they come from? Out of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Then when you go in Revelation 14, you find out everybody talking about they're going to be with Messiah. But when you read Revelation 14, it's only that 144,000 that's going to be with the Messiah wherever he goes. So consider these things because they're very interesting. Because these are, are the reason why they change these things is to keep you from finding the truth about who you are and your relationship with God and that this whole Bible is involved around one nation of people, black, Hebrew, Israelites. And today, the Gentiles, in 1948, they put some people in our land that they brought out of Europe and say that they were Jews. But according to history, when General Titus invaded Jerusalem, the Jews were sold to the Ethiopians to work in the salt mine. This is the elder.